It is a beautiful day today, and I'm gonna get to play with my thing, and Kelly's gonna actually help me play with it, so that'll be a fun day. Um, we're going to change it to electronic ignition, replace the old distributor on it, all that kind of stuff. But uh, let me start it up here, and let's make sure it starts. It's been sitting for about two months. So we'll get ready to, yeah, we're gonna change the spark plugs on it and a few other things like that, so. Full day of playing with the thing. He's a little low and hasn't been started in a while and it's really cold out. Right. Something has messed up the hood of my car. This is dented up, it goes like that, which has got the wrap on it, so it's a little deceiving, and then it's dented down there, and something got it. Oh, is that rust? Oh my God, is that all rust under there that's popping up? Oh, that is not good. I think that's all rust. I think the vinyl wrap has trapped water under there and rusted it out. Let's see what's going on. Well, it looks perfectly normal over here. Actually, a bunch of water just came out. I think maybe that's ice. I think that's ice that's popped up under there and froze up. So a bunch of water just came out. But it could be rust. It's solid, whatever it is. This is gonna have to come off. But no, I think that's ice that's formed under there and swelled up. That's good, my hood's not messed up, hopefully. Okay, so there's today's project. We got the Bosch coil, the uh, Protronics Flamethrower Vacuum Advance distributor, some new NGK plugs, and the Flamethrower uh, plug wires as well. Um, 
I'm not sure if the ones I had on there are up to the to handle this. So this, they, I bought them. I don't know. Maybe snake oil. I don't know. But uh, this will be the project for today. And uh, Leroy is out here going to help. You going to help, buddy? Yeah? You going to help? <laughs> okay. I will read through the directions because I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I need to make sure that everything is exactly the same. Plug wire wise and everything. Um, I would assume that it is, but I thought that I saw something where like they're clocked in a slightly different position for this, but I haven't read these yet, so I will read them and figure it out. Uh, I need to look and see if those spark plug wires go on with that little end cap or not before I do that, because these do not go on. They go, you unscrew that little thing. I don't know if the new wires have that or not. Okay, I wanted to make sure that these go in with that top piece on because the old spark plugs didn't have that and yeah that snaps in like that so Couldn't find the hole, but I found it. Torque wrench set to 14 foot-pounds here, which is just about nothing, so you got to be careful. It's basically just a little bit more than finger tight. <laughs> There it is, right there. Click. I don't know where that's supposed to root to, but that'll do for now. Flex hat wrench it comes in handy. Can you get my hand in there for you? Let's 
suppose I should clip these on. <laughs> screwdriver back there to pop that bottom of that. I'm going to go ahead and clean my hands real quick with my, not sponsored by Gojo, but I will put a link in the description because these things are freaking amazing. Now my hands are too wet. <laughs> that one was on there. I had a hard time getting this back plug out. The socket didn't seem like it wanted to go on it. An old broken off piece of, this is a hard plastic piece. It doesn't go to these plug wires. So it must've been the ones before it or something was down in there next to the plug where the socket would just go to it, but it wouldn't, couldn't go over it. So I was able to finally get it loose with some needle nose pliers. I, I with the shining the Olight flashlight down in there is awesome. I was able to actually see that red thing and I got some needle nose pliers and was able to work it around there and pull it out. And then I could get that plug out. But had to be the one that's the hardest to get to, the hardest to see and all that, and that stupid little thing just got in my way. Crazy. Should've known it was a 10 millimeter, everything's a 10 millimeter. Side's the plus, that side's the minus, so the minus is only the green one, so. So I know which one's which. What did I do there? Oh man.
all the way out, or do I have to remove that whole clamp? That I don't remember. I gotta get a 13 millimeter down there. I gotta go turn this over to top dead center on number one firing there. So then that's it. Position one, top dead center. Just to make the next one easy to go in. And then I'll pull it out. Okay, keep it as a spare. Something just fell out of it. <laughs> Did you see what that was? No. Now it's time to read the directions. Set the first cylinder in the firing order to top dead center compre uh, compression stroke, which I've done that. So I, I did that before. I, I had a feeling that was gonna have to happen. So that way I had a reference point. Uh, remove the distributor cap, make sure the rotor is pointing to, term, to number one. Yeah, because it could have been 180 degrees off at top dead center. Uh, so I did that. Label the location of the distributor wires on the coil. Okay. Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> I know the firing order. I can just confirm that I've got it right. Um, if an external electronic box is being used, I'm sure wires will not go directly to the coil. So I'm not using an external. So it sounds like that would go directly to the coil. Remove the distributor die shaft spring. Verify the direction of slots perpendicular. Remove the distributor. Hold down clamp. Boy, I probably should have read this before I did all the other stuff. Install the clamp. So that's where I'm at right now. Alright. Put some assembly lube on here. Give me my flashlight down there, please.
me go get my wire crimpers, please, the electrical ones. Okay, so I put the ground on the coil and then the positive on there. And then I'm gonna, I could probably could have shortened these up a little bit, but I, I didn't want to cut them. So I'll just neaten it up just a little bit here. The zip tie. Pointed at number one on the cap, confirm that. And then uh, I'm gonna click, uh, I'm gonna ground it and then click my positive lead on the negative on there. And then when I get the voltage continuity of turning it counterclockwise, uh, it should get me. It's where I need to be. So if Kelly will turn the distributor counterclockwise, and when we see 12 volts on there, you're gonna stop. Every second that it well, since you see a number jump on there, you'll see something that might not be exactly 12. Right there. Did you go further than when it clicked, or did you stop exactly where it clicked? I think I stopped exactly when it clicked. Okay, I just gotta tighten it down. That work. All right, let's see if it starts. I think I got everything hooked back up. <laughs> That's not encouraging. <laughs> You can watch here, the rotor's not going to turn the whole time. Go ahead and turn it over for one second and stop. Again. Spinning. <laughs> Go ahead again. So it'll do one revolution and stop spinning. I can't get it to go down any further. There is a little bit of play there, though. I guess maybe that's that bent, it's bent. The distributor hold down clamp is bent. It's not completely flat. The distributor isn't, I could get the car to start and fire if I push down on the distributor, if I loosen this and push down on it. Um, but because it's bent, it's not letting, it's the rotor's not spinning the whole entire time in there right now. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit of work on this thing and then uh, see what I can do. But yeah, it's definitely bent. So I'll see about ordering a new one of those. So I put that on like an anvil and tried to flatten it out and then I threw it on the grinder and thinned it out a little bit too. For some reason I don't have the clearance, like it's really close to not wanting to stay in. But now that it's flat, I can, no, you can see it's sticking up just a little bit still. I'll keep it timed, but uh, it should start and run now because it shouldn't skip. So go ahead and Kelly, you want to try and start it? I don't think it'll... Go ahead.
ice under the wrap. <laughs> it froze and it wasn't rust. Um, but that's gonna have to come off. So there's no damage on it. I ordered the new clamp. It was like $7 on Amazon. Um, it'll be here in a few days. So hopefully for now, that'll just run enough for me to keep it in here. I'm not really driving this car now anyways, but just wanted to get that done. Uh, but hopefully I can still drive it around the property until then. But I'm gonna take it for a test drive up down the driveway here in a minute. I gotta keep the old distributor with me uh, in case I need to. It's weird that like, the old one would fit, but that one didn't. Um, must be a little slightly tolerance difference or something between the old one and that one. But anyways, it's running a good battery's a little bit low so I threw it on the charger here for a while do a lot of cranking there on it too plus it's been sitting for a few months so just let it get charged back up good while I got a moment here got the sun out so plenty plenty of power to be able to do that today okay let's try the test drive starts good sign Warms up. It's getting better. All right, we'll do another run. It's hard to drive a stick shift, steer, and hold a cell phone. acceleration on it.
up now. So I'm like, it's floored right now, and then, then it goes. So it's got a little lag. To figure out how to set that advanced, the vacuum advanced timing side of it, maybe fiddle with it just a little bit, but it's running good enough to wait till I get the clamp, because then I'm gonna have to mess with it. I hear him coming. You hear the roar? He's about 150 feet down the holler there. Climbing. He's gonna drop his toad somewhere. I don't know if he's coming in the property before he does. He didn't wanna climb the hill with the toad. I told him he could be the first one. Nobody's done it yet. Looks like he's dropping the toad back there. If you remember Dan, he was our first bus up the hill besides Lenny. Lots of new solar panels. Purple's got his own little window down there. Ha <laughs> ha